All right, so as is my tendency, um, I'll see like procedures and processes that people do when they're doing anything in Photoshop, any type of retouch, and uh, I'll learn from that and I'll absorb it. And uh, sometimes I just think that's kind of cool. I might use it, I might not. And a lot of times when I don't want to use a method or I don't prefer it, usually it's because there's some kind of like issue with flexibility and adaptability. And so I thought to myself, when I saw this again recently, I, I started thinking about it just as I'm working throughout the morning, what could be possibly a, a better way, a more flexible way to do this? And I had an idea. So then I played around with it and I tested it. And I think it's pretty cool. So I want to show you. Uh, we're going to start by doing what people have done before. So for example, there's different ways to do this, but let's say this is one way. We're going to do some contouring, okay, on Jessica's face here. This is a finished image, but we're going to do it for demo purposes. And we're going to do it with a method that some people will like to do. And let me show you the method that, that some people do first, okay? So let's say I go to Curves and I do a, a burning layer, right? Invert that mask, I'm gonna duplicate that, and I'm gonna do a dodge layer, brightening, okay? And then I take a, you know, a small brush with a relatively hard, um, you know, um, hardness to it, excuse me. And, and then I might decide, okay, I wanna highlight certain areas and I might do them a certain way. Um, I'm not the best at this method, but I've seen it done. And, you know, that's kind of cool. And then you can come in to that mask, um, excuse me, the layer mask properties, and then you can change the feather of it and you can blur that out until you get something that you might like. And there's a little bit, it's probably a little too blurred, something like that. And that's one method of contouring. And of course the same thing can be done here because now you can choose these uh, dark areas if you want to shape them a little bit in some way. Whatever it seems like it wants to, wants to be darkened or whatever. And then of course you come and choose your blur. And that's, uh, you know, on normal, it's just two curved layers. And now we have a little bit of contouring for better or worse. We can tone that down. Excuse me. Let's go back to our properties. Just kind of give you a rough demo of what people might do. And then, of course, you play with opacity. And, and now we have some contouring, right? And people play with that all the time. My problem is, as much as I like the uh, feather function here on the layer mask properties, giving me some flexibility, I don't like that I can't really move anything and I could go and and you know run uh, some kind of a I don't know some kind of warping or, or transform on the mask or whatever and I thought well no not really uh, I don't really want to do that and uh, what else can I do so I had a thought so what I've done is I'm gonna make a blank layer I'm gonna call it D for dodge I'm gonna make another one doesn't matter I'm gonna call it B for burn and uh, both of these are going to be set to soft light for now. So if I go to Dodge, I'm going to take once again my small white paintbrush because I'm not making a mask now. Now I'm actually painting some um, some actual white. And soft light is a good blending mode, to, I think, to work with for some of the things. Let's go ahead and uh, try to do some more of this highlighting idea that I had going on for whatever it's worth, meaning that I'm not the super expert at this. And of course, you know, I can undo that if I don't like it, something like that. All right, so that's some level of flexibility, right? Um, or rather it will be because I can right click the layer and say convert to smart object, cool. And then I can go to blur, Gaussian blur, and maybe like a 75, and there it is. So now I've done similar to using the layer mask properties in that I have a smart object, so I can change the blur of those lines at any moment, which is kind of cool. Let's leave it at 70, actually. 70, cool. No, no, 75, let's leave it at 75 for now. Okay, and then on our burn, we're gonna do the same thing with uh, dark. So we're gonna choose some dark areas. Oh, I don't know, something like that. There, 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 there. Oh, I don't know where else, maybe there, there, across there, under there, something like that. And then once again, right click, and say convert to smart object. And then let's go ahead and run the blur again. We're gonna leave it at 70. Already we have some basic contouring that we can tweak and adjust, you know, opacity, masking, whatever. We can do a lot to it. But I thought, how do we make that even more flexible? And I, I had an idea. And the idea involves liquify. Now, what's interesting is that uh, what I thought about showing this, or the reason why I thought about showing it is that, yeah, it's pretty straightforward in liquify, but some people have not done this function before. So it might be a good lesson for you as well if you've not done the specific function in liquify. And you might think, oh, okay, liquify, we're gonna reshape the burning areas or the, 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 the you know, the burn, the darkening areas and the highlights, that, that makes sense. Okay, so we go to the burn layer, it's a smart filter, that's great, filter, and we come here and we go to liquify. And then we open up liquify and we get this. Now what, what, what 
What good is this? This is not useful for us. Okay. Well, if you don't have all this stuff open over here on the right side, if you have face aware liquify turned off, um, come down here and look inside mask options. Excuse me. Uh, it's actually by itself, isn't it? It's under view options. I usually leave all this open, so I don't even know these are labeled. But under view options, go to show backdrop. Okay. In this case, it's on all layers, but you can make it just on the background or whatever layer you happen to be working on. And I put it on behind, right? So now, even though it's a little exaggerated, I can reshape with a fairly strong brush, density of 32, pressure about 20. I can reshape where I want the shadows to be. Even though I started with kind of brushing them into the general area, I can reshape it, okay? And there you go. Now I've reshaped them ever so slightly. And to see it more, let's say you want to see it more, you can make a slightly smaller blur, okay? Because it's, it's a smart filter, right? And then you can go back to liquify. Okay. And you can, again, reshape this exactly where you want, right on top of your image. Change the brush size. Use any liquify tool that makes sense to move these spots where you want them in specifically and where you might not want them, right? And then hit OK. And there you go. And the same thing can be done, of course, for your dodge layer. We go to liquify. There it all is. Okay. And we can, once again, reshape if we really want to and keep tweaking those highlights until we get exactly where we want them to be. And I'm not just doing this arbitrarily. I'm sort of trying to pretend I know what I'm doing here. The reason why I say, guys, this is a, a technique that is used, hit OK. And now everything is flexible. This is a technique that is used by a lot of people that I've seen. I've seen people do it in front of me. I've seen lots of videos, etc. But it's not something I normally leverage, but I thought about a way to make it even more flexible. Once again, on the burn, those lines are a little bit strong, so I can go to Gaussian and make it more like a 75 I wanted to. Blur them out pretty nicely, there we go. And on the brightness, that's not bad. And once we get the shape where we want them, then of course, we immediately have opacity. So I can make them both 50%, for example, which might be a little light. Okay, we went from this to this. So to me, that's a flexible setup. I like that idea. I don't want I don't want to paint in certain areas, blur them with the layer mask properties feathering, and then I can't move them. I don't like that idea. I can mask, sure, but I may want to reshape them and I want them to be organic. So I want to be able to move them, right? So I think that's a cool idea. I, I enjoy that. Here again, you can make your Gaussian blurs kind of small, right? And then when you go to liquify, you can literally reshape. Because these are blurry lines, relatively blurry, it doesn't entirely matter. And you notice that you're not moving her face. You're moving only your lines, the, the, these initial lines that you drew to be blurred. You're moving only them. Hit OK. And then you can Gaussian them back to what they need to be. Blur them out. Same with this one. Go back to liquify. And I can kind of reshape. I don't want that on the eyebrow, for example. Um, I can get it away from the lip if I want to. Bring it more into where I wanted, etc., etc. Something like that. Hit OK. And then also blur it out again. Opacity change opacity change and now i've got some shaping that i might think is maybe potentially pretty cool right there you go so that's just a thought you know um again i like to have flexibility i think the method is okay i might start leveraging it potentially more um now that i know i can make it uh you know flexible i think that's pretty cool um i might even set up an action that can do it once i get my lines drawn i'll hit an action and then boom and if i do that if i do create an action i'll put it in the description below for you guys to download um if there's no action down there leave a comment and tell me that you want one uh and and i'll see what i can do right i just like to see about how i can make things more flexible this is nothing i came up with but i think applying it to this method is potentially pretty cool and i might start playing more with that especially if i end up with a successful action that makes it kind of quick because i do admit my contouring is minimal uh, honestly i do it a lot with uh, other more generalized methods i do it with blend diff and levels i do it with the skn panel all the time too because i have some cool functions for that um but manually tweaking um uh, contouring like this i don't do enough of it um, because most of the techniques i've seen feel a little bit limiting or maybe i'm just not very good at them regardless i developed this idea here to make everything super flexible i can move the the highlights and the and and the and the shadows or rather the burning and the dodging i can move them wherever i want i can change the opacity i can change the blend mode i can change how much they're blurred ah, that's my kind of thing total control anyway uh like i said I'll, I'll work on an action and if i make it it'll be in the description